Good morning, everyone. This is Mitch with SC Weather. Hope you all had a great weekend. It is Monday, November the 2nd, and uh, we're talking about hurricanes. <laughs> it is November, and it's just a crazy... Um, we have Hurricane Ida. Uh, it's about to slam Nicaragua and uh, Honduras and things like that, and uh, cause catastrophic flooding. Uh, high terrain in this area, so it's just going to enhance flooding. It's going to do a good job weakening what could be major Hurricane Ida, uh, making landfall as it is moving very pr pretty decently slow. I mean, not that slow, west at 12 miles per hour, but it might slow down according to the HWRF model, definitely, um, as it gets closer to the coast. But let's start getting deep into this because this is an interesting setup. Before we get too deep, if you haven't subscribed, uh, my video did very well yesterday and I, and I got a lot of growth and I really appreciate it. Uh, hit that subscribe button. I talk weather here in the southeast. I'm also a storm chaser. I like to go out and um, chase events if it isn't too long of a drive. I really do that here in the state of South Carolina, but I have a lot of videos of um, different chases that I have done. Uh, so uh, hit the subscribe button. I just appreciate y'all watching. It's awesome. It's uh, much appreciated. Um, but here we go. Um, it is now, as I looked over here, it is a hurricane, 70 mile per hour hurricane. It might be stronger. This is as of 4 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. So this is pretty much the latest update. It might be even stronger. Would not be surprised on the next update. But here you go. You got Edith spinning away out here. It looks like a decent, a, a, a good looking hurricane here. Um, and it's, and it's getting its act together fast. You, it's starting to close around its eye. You're not getting a lot of, uh, dry air getting in there. If it can get that eye, um, closed off all the way, uh, you're definitely going to get RI, which is rapid intensification as it nears, uh, Nicaragua and Honduras. So, uh, this is the HWRF model and this is, uh, initializing here this afternoon that's a 955 storm so it has it strengthening very fast this morning into the afternoon and look at the speed it's just slowing down we're getting into Tuesday um, it's not moving very fast there's not really anything like a front that far south to really push it or anything any kind of steering currents to really move fast and we're getting into 12 o'clock Tuesday and it still hasn't made landfall but check it out um, this model has it just spinning away off the coast of um, Nicaragua and Honduras and uh, just strengthening and eventually it just does some upwelling and um, it, it, it kind of I think probably turns up some cooler water and quick strengthening but this is a category 5 hurricane category 4 hurricane slamming into this area obviously it weakens quickly as we get into Wednesday and uh, just causes catastrophic flooding for this area high terrain for sure um, but this storm we need to watch because um, as we get into the end of this run, the storm gets o back over water to Western Caribbean. And look, it drops. It starts to drop again, and it starts to strengthen again. So this is what we have to watch. Um, I do want to show you this. Let's see if we can start it over here. Um, uh, it's about to start over here. This is the loop. This is the, the SpaghettiOs for where a system would be. It has it. You know, we're getting into Friday, Saturday, but check it out. We get into the weekend. It gets back over to Western Caribbean and all of them get scattered everywhere. This is, this is the, uh, the EPS ensemble saying where whatever's left of EDA could be. Um, again, it shows it hitting, um, Nicaragua, Honduras. Get back over to West Caribbean, but check out. This is where it could affect the Southeast. I'm telling you, this is a system we need to watch next week. Going into next week for especially areas like Florida, even the um, eastern Gulf of Mexico, uh, even our state in South Carolina and the rest of the southeast, this could be an historic storm here in the lower 48. I'm not saying it will, but I'm saying the potential is there um, for sure. So we need to watch out to see what this does. There's, there's, there's a signal there. It's pretty far out, but it's definitely there. This is the operational Euro model from the latest from overnight. And, you know, it pretty much shows... Ida hitting uh, Nicaragua, Honduras, um, kind of, you know, weakening, obviously due to high terrain, mountains. Um, there it is still. But eventually, it gets back over land, uh, over, my bad, over the waters of the Western Caribbean. There's still warm water there, but look what it does. It, like, gets caught up in some currents, and uh, it just sits in one spot and turns into a monster of a storm south of Cuba. That is a Category 4 hurricane, no doubt. 
maybe even stronger. This is a Category 5 hurricane, and it's starting at the end of the run next Wednesday into Thursday. Next Wednesday into Thursday, trying to sneak more north. This is very far out, but there is a very dangerous signal here for something. I'm telling you, um, this is the, o, uh, the OOZ uh, model here, and we're going to back it up, obviously, here. And, you know, check it out. Um, let's see if we can get her rolling here. GFS definitely has Ida strengthening big time. Gets called up in Honduras and Nicaragua. And it gets back over land. And it's just having trouble figuring out where the rest of Ida would be. This is, would be this weekend. But um, it's south of Cuba here. So this is getting into Sunday. This is getting into Monday. And, and it's it's just inching north. It's trying to get north. It's trying to fight off steering currents. It's, it's not allowing it to easily get north. But this is that classic path for tropical systems this time of the year. Uh, this is getting deeper into November. We're almost getting into mid-November, and we're still dealing with the storm. This is next Wednesday. We're still talking about Eda. This is going to be a storm we talk about for a while I really do think so, and get check it out. It's a hurricane infecting the tip of Florida as we get into next Thursday, but what we'll do after that, we're not sure. Eventually, probably a front starts to push it on out, but this is a monster off the coast, coast of the southeast uh, about two weeks out, which is no man's land. We have no idea what's going to happen two weeks out, but um, then we get another one that forms right here and just kind of pops off, but... Um, the latest run has not really came through yet, so we don't really know what it's going to do. Um, but it, it's showing the same thing. Let me see if it's going to initialize here. But, yeah, I mean, same thing. You know, it shows it's strengthening. And uh, this is the latest run, but it only gives out to 114 hours. But it still is giving you the same idea, the same signal that it's going to get back over the Western Caribbean and try to re-strengthen again. Um, and this is this weekend, so... Still showing that same signal. I do want to talk about my folks at home. Um, it is going to be a chilly day. Most guys are going to, people are going to wake up into the 30s uh, this morning with some breezy conditions. The winds will die down, but it is going to be a chilly day. Highs in the 50s, maybe statewide. Maybe some few folks will make it into the 60s. But tonight, I think we get a widespread frost. The winds die down. The dew points um, will begin to rise a little bit, which will allow frost to form even here in the Midlands and the upstate. So chilly day, chilly night again tonight. That's all I got. I appreciate y'all watching and y'all have a good